Okay guys, so here's the second in my two-part hard moles question series. The first part, which I definitely would watch first, is just going to contain a few bits which we're not going to go over again today for time's sake. The first part was about doing percentage purity, which is just, did my elephant suck my auntie? Again, watch the last video if you don't know what those letters stand for. It's like a word mnemonic. So data, moles, equation, sample, second moles equation, answer. Now with percentage purity, the second moles equation always starts mass equals, and then you bang that mass in the percentage purity equation to find your answer. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be finding out x. Now there's two types of find out x. The first type is where x is an element. The second type is where x is the water of crystallization. We're going to do the hard of those two types today, where x is the water of crystallization. Where x is an element, it's just very, very slightly different at the end. But these both still follow the same basic principle, did my elephant suck my ante? So, here's the question. Just like last time, let's pause this, have a go at the question, and then when you think you've got the answer, unpause it and we'll go through the answer. So, and unpause. Here we go. So here's the question. Did stands for data and decimeters cubed. So I'm going to write up all my data in a diagram. And you can see, again, it's pretty much the same as last time. I've got my hydrated sodium carbonate salt, and I've got my mass of that. In a certain volume, we added some hydrochloric acid. Here's all the data. After they'd finished reacting, so straight away we can be thinking, what reaction are they going to do, a carbonate and an acid? We took a sample and then titrated the sample against some nitric acid. So all of the remaining hydrated sodium carbonate is now going to be, well, it's in water, so it won't be hydrated anymore, is going to be reacting with this nitric acid. So part one says find the moles of nitric acid used in the titration. So before we can do anything else, we really should come up with some equations. So first of all, I've got my sodium carbonate and nitric acid Again, if you're not too good at balancing equations, I've got a different video on that. Watch that now. If you are good, you should end up with a 1 to 2 ratio. Basically, it's because uh, carbonate, and I've said NO3, this should be CO3. Oh, no, it won't. So, yeah, it will be. So, I've got my carbonate is given carbon dioxide. My sodium and my nitrate are reacting together to give the sodium nitrate. Now, just like the last question, this is actually quite a rare thing which is going to happen now, but it does still happen. So just like the last question, my hydrated sodium salt is not just reacting with one compound. It's reacting with two. First of all, it's reacting with the hydrochloric acid, then it's reacting with the nitric acid. If I want to find the total amount of moles of sodium chloride hydrated salt that I have, Rather than write it out each time to make it a bit messy, I've just put H salt, hydrated salt. That will be equal to the amount of hydrated salt that reacted with the hydrochloric acid added to the amount of hydrated salt that reacted with the nitric acid. So it's almost like two separate questions. We're then going to add them together. So part A, find the moles of nitric acid. We know our concentration, but we know it in grams per decimeter cubed. We have to divide grams by decimeter cubed by the MR to find the moles per decimeter cubed. Just a little equation worth remembering. You can derive it from moles equals mass over MR. So that's where you get it from. Anyway, rearranging that and feeding in the numbers, the concentration of nitric acid equals 0.4 moles per decimeter cubed. So this is like an extra question they've thrown in. Now we get to the big question, find the water of crystallization. So did my, the first moles equation always starts moles equals, what are we asked in A to find the moles of? The moles of nitric acid. So moles of nitric acid equals CV, remember our concentration in moles per decimeter cubed, bang in the numbers, and you get a moles of nitric acid of 0 0.00496. That's question A now answered. Did my elephant, well, elephant stands for the equation. We need to convert the moles of the thing we've just found out into the moles of the thing we care about, which is the hydrated salt, the sodium carbonate salt. So it is a 1 to 2 ratio. So I must have half as many moles of hydrated salt as I do acid. 
So basically I'm going to take my moles of acid and divide by 2 and that will give me the number of moles of hydrated salt. But that's the number of moles in this titration here. So again, if you had your 2 pence coin, we'd have gone from the moles of nitric acid to the moles of hydrated salt in here. Did my elephant suck? So we now need to do the sample. The sample is where you either multiply or divide by the sample factor. The sample factor is the larger volume divided by the smaller volume, which in this case works out as 6. So we're going from the smaller volume to the larger volume, so I must need to multiply by the sample factor. If I was going from the larger volume to the smaller volume, the opposite way around, we would just divide by the sample factor. So I have now found my number of moles of hydrated salt in my original solution that reacted with the nitric acid, 0.01488. Let's remember that number, that's this bit here. Now all we need to do is find the number of moles of hydrated salt that reacted with hydrochloric acid and we're going to add these two numbers together to get our total number of moles. So let's go on to that one. I'm going to need a new balanced equation. So now we've got my hydrated sodium carbonate reacting with the hydrochloric acid which again comes out as a 2 to 1 ratio. Feed in the volume in the concentration, which again, we know straight from our diagram. It's really helpful. It lets us see what we've got if we did it properly. So all these values I'm just picking straight out of my diagram. Feed those in to get my moles of HCl. Again, it's a 1 to 2 ratio. So divide the number of moles of HCl by 2. That will give me my moles of hydrated salt. Did my, so did my elephant suck? Do we need to do a sample? Well, no, again, because on our diagram, the HCl was added before we took the sample. So we don't need to do a sample there. So I now have my number of moles of hydrated salt that reacted with the hydrochloric acid. Let's add that to the amount that reacted with the nitric acid from before to get our total amount of hydrated salt that has reacted in this experiment, 0.08988 is what it will be. Now comes the extra trick. So that's did my elephant suck? We, we kind of had to do it twice because it was two reactants. Um, either which way, add them together and we've got that. Did my elephant suck my? The last moles equation always starts with what you're trying to find out. And for uh, find x, what it really wants is the MR. Because once you've got the MR, you can look on the periodic table to see which element or group of elements has the MR. So MR equals mass over moles. I know the mass for my equation at the start from the diagram I drew. And the moles we've just figured out, bang all that in, and we get slightly over 200 MR, which would be in grams per mole. Now comes a fancy trick. If you want to find the water, and this is just something to remember, if you want to find the water of crystallization, what you do is the total MR, which is the MR of the hydrated salt, minus the MR of the salt, divided by the MR of H2O. Just learn that, memorise that. And you can derive it if you forget, but I would just, just learn it as well. And that will give you what the water of crystallisation is. So I know my total MR. I can calculate the MR of the salt, sodium carbonate, as long as I've got a periodic table. Don't forget mass numbers are the bigger numbers. Divide by the MR of water, which is always 18, and I will get what X is, which in this case is 5.2 something. Obviously, we're then going to round to the nearest sensible answer, which in this case is 5. And then don't forget, we need to bang our answer in a formula. So the answer is not 5, it's Na2CO3.5. H2O. If X was an element rather than the water of crystallization, so let's say for example we had XCl2 and I knew the total MR, MR total, all I would do is the MR of X is the MR total minus the MR of the Cl2. Because that would give me, you know, if you've got XCl2 equals 10, then x equals 10 minus the Cl2, for example. Although that could never happen as you'd get a negative MR. And then that's it, guys. We now have our x for the water of crystallization. 
But like I say, you can also get them where x is an element. It's no different, it's actually slightly easier. You've got less of an equation to remember. Okay. Any questions about this or any like little niggly bits you've got, definitely post a, a question and I'll, I'll see if I can answer it in the comments section.